Uh, that's exactly the kind of story I was hoping for. Well, let's hear a couple more since she saved us so much time. Okay. They went into the store to get an ice cream. A quadruple scoop cost twice as much as a double scoop, which is a dollar seventy-nine. Cleveland sent three dollars for service. How much money did he give to the cashier? Okay. All right. That works. But it's not quite the story I was looking for, but it works. Like it needs to be. We need those two pieces of information, right? Yeah. Okay. This guy, the Russian guy, the Russian guy. Yeah, paid three dollars to show up, and then gets paid two dollars for every X hour he works. Okay, hey, another story similar, right? To Grace's. Got two good stories there. What do you see that Grace and Clint's stories have in common? As a guy. Hours. 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 What's that? They earn money per hour. On the head, right there. You can put the nail on the head. They earn money per hour. They earn money per hour. They have plus three or three or any money. He said he already has three dollars when they said it. So he has three dollars and he's given three dollars. He just got three dollars. Right? He just for nothing. For almost nothing. Just showing up or for why did the, why did the person have three dollars? Because he showed up. He already up. had it. He just had three dollars. It's important to recognize that you know that's what the three is representing. In a real life situation, it's just like we had it. We just had it to start with. For whatever reason, it was just already there. Okay? Does anybody have a similar story? Okay. Oh, wow, man, you guys came up with that kind of story real, real quick. So let's point at things and talk about what they mean. All right? Let's talk about what X means. Let's use Grace's story. What does it represent? The amount of hours. Somebody else, um, what does this represent, Aiden? Um, okay, extra money. Some extra dollars. Okay, here's a pretty important piece. This is what I was hoping we would get out of our stories right here. Really important lesson to learn about these kinds of equations. This two. What do the two stand for? With the um, constant. Constant. Actually, this is a constant. Oh. Right? But like in the story, what does it represent? Like how many hours? Does it represent how many hours? He gets $3 an hour in that story. Oh, and you get paid. Isn't that what you said? Yeah. Right? Two, two dollars per hour. Right? Right. Yeah. And there's no other part of this that looks like a something for something else, okay? It's a pretty important thing, right? And as the hours change, and we multiply the hours by the dollars, we get a different amount, right? Mm -hmm. This doesn't change, this is just always the three extra that we had to start with, but this part changes. Every time an hour goes by, we get a certain amount of dollars. It's almost like <coughs> hours are trans, what was that word? Uh, Transition. What, what do they call it? Like when you go uh, you, you go down to Mexico, you turn your dollars into oh transactions, exchange, exchange, exchange rate. Yeah, the exchange rate. Maybe it was exchange. There's almost this exchange for uh, well dollars for hours, right? You give this function here a, 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 a number of hours, and what do you get out of there? You get dollars, right? Because what happens? Let, let's look at it for a specific example. Like if you work in this scenario for six hours. If you work for six hours, Bridger and Ethan, if you work for six hours, how would we calculate how much money you have total? Total, Ethan? You would take uh, two times six and add three. Exactly what you would do. Now let's look at it with the units thrown on there. We got two what? What are the Dollars. units? Hours. Dollars an hour. Dollars an hour, okay. This is gonna look kind of weird, but I could write it like this. Dollars per hour, usually Times six, six what? Six, six hours. hours. Six hours, just over the number one. There is, it's not hours per anything, it's just hours. Plus three dollars, yeah, three more dollars. That's an important thing to see, that this is dollars, it's not hours, right? It's dollars. Okay. Yeah. Now, what happens here? Well, uh, let's see what happens to the units. You literally get hours divided by hours. 
not kind of like that. It is an hour divided by one hour. The units divide each other. And what is anything divided by itself? One. 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 So we get hour, one hour divided by one hour is just one, right? There's a one to one ratio, right? Hour to hour, okay? So the units cancel each other out. What units are left? Okay, money. Dollars. Money. Dollars. Dollar money. So we got two dollars times six. Six what here? Six hours. Just six. six. Right? Six groups. Two dollars times six groups. You see what I'm saying? The, the, the six no longer has units. The hours have been canceled with the hours from this, this unit here. So we get two dollars times six is twelve dollars plus three more dollars. This kind of looks like a, a double dollar sign. It's not. It's a twelve. Twelve plus three, fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars what? Or is how much money he has. Is how much money he has. Uh, when? At, at, at the end. end. At the end of the day. Hours, six hours. How many? At six hours. Six hours. Oh, six. Specifically six. You gotta work. work. You have to know the number of hours that he works to know how much money he has after that many hours, right? Seven. If he works for X hours, if he works for X hours, you know how many dollars does he have? X. X. No. He works for X hours, he gets X dollars? Because we don't know how much mm -hmm. hours it works. He gets two hours. So X and X are the same. How many dollars does he have? Um, two. One, he would have like. Mm -hmm. Double that. Uh, two. Double you? We're getting closer. Yeah, it needs to be something other than X. Two X. Y. X squared. Quiet, Danielle is talking, you're being very rude and inconsiderate. If you have, so if you were X hours. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's two dollars for per hour. Right, right. And when you have like another letter besides X and Y because you have to have Y. What does, what does Y represent? Y would then? represent the, uh, the number of the amount of money that you got for working X amount of hours plus three. Oh, that's what I mean. Like total, if he works for X hours, including the three dollars that he had, how much money would he have? Oh. What's that? Why? Why? Yeah, he would have Y dollars. Oh, right. We don't know what it is, and we don't need to make up another variable like W or M. It's there. It's Y. <coughs> right. Because we have Y. And you know what's the same as saying that he has Y dollars? The same as saying Y dollars is saying 2X plus 3 dollars. That's why Y equals that. Why Y equals 2X plus 3, right? There is an equality between those two things. He has Y dollars. He has 2X plus 3 dollars. To say Y is the same as to say 2X plus 3 in this instance. Okay? So the thing that I wanted you to learn that has been very important, and we want to nail this down, is very, very often, um, the kind, when we look at a function like this, this guy right here, this 2, is something like this. I think you guys are going to do well. Just talking to each other. We're not even talking. <coughs> okay, who's getting it? Who's facing it? Who's getting writing implement. A quill or something. And maybe write this down. <laughs> this thing right here is what we call a rate. Rate. We want to get real fancy, we call it a rate of money. Money. Of X. A rate of change. Because there's a change in this equation. Right? And actually this is such a special equation, we call it a awesome. I'm not waiting for an answer, I'm actually waiting for it. Oh. oh, sorry. All right, so the, those, those two faces look the same. <laughs> so I understand. The rate of change. This, this equation is a special equation. We call it a function. Functions change. Hours can change, and therefore the amount of money that he has changes. It's variable. It's up in the air. It could be anything. Okay? So there's this innate changing element. There, there's some equations. If I were to put, like, 
uh, 12 there for y, that's just an equation that I can solve for x. Just the, it, it, x has to be one specific thing. And if I put uh, oh, 15, if I put 15 there, then it locks it in. Everything is decided x would have to be 6. We know that from the one that we've already done, right? Now, that's, but that's not a function. A function, it can change. The hours go up, and in this case, when the hours go up, the, the total dollars go up. Okay. Um, let's see. What are some other examples of rate of change? Uh, miles per hour. Miles per hour. Aiden. Dollars per second. I don't know who makes dollars per second, but somebody Michael, must. Michael Jackson does. No, he's not. He's, I he used to. He's, he's pushing up daisies. Right. Sorry, I had to find out. <laughs> uh, what's another rate? Um, dollars per minute. Dollars per minute? Yeah? Why don't we have Bill Gates makes Steve Jobs. That's so off topic. It's fair, though. What's fair? Uh oh. <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, shh! You get those, though. <laughs> uh, oh, we're about to get the extra credit. Okay. So another rate, though. Another rate. We've done a lot of dollars for different time intervals. Should we change it up? Miles per year. Miles per year. Is there anything that moves miles per year? Yeah. Um, well, a light year is six trillion miles per year. A light year is how far? Wait, no, no. How do you six know that? I was Jeez, like I a nerd of space from <laughs> second grade to fourth grade. <laughs> this has a lot of fractions. I How many miles is it? I mean, six trillion miles per year. Six trillion miles per year. That's a lot of miles. So it's just a lot of how far light can travel in a year. Light like travels fast, so that's a lot of miles. So miles per year. Cupcakes per person. That's that is definitely a rate. Yeah, cups, cupcakes per person. Oh, yeah, I like to like walk a couple miles in a year. He's going to go. He's going to miles per year. Miles per second? Miles per second. Like the That's flash. how we measure uh, the flash. Yeah, man. In OK series. Yes? It's a racing For a monkey. We have great rates here. These are great rates. What do all of these rates have in common? What do you hear in all of them? Per. 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 P-E-R, not P-U-R-R-R. Now, now if we're all talking and we're like, yeah, 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 I get it. But some of you may not be getting it. So I want to challenge you again to write three more stories. Okay. I'm going to write three equations. That was the other class. Three equations. Y equals 4x plus 2. I want this one to be about, let's just do dollars again. Y equals 6x minus 4. Let's make this one about distance. Dollars. Can we do the next one about foods? Monkeys. Bananas monkey. Monkeys. Uh, you could... You could, in a roundabout way, make this about food. Let's see how you do with Whoa. this. I'm going to make this about weight. Uh, <coughs> monkeys don't weigh that much. I weigh them. Okay, let's all concentrate. Concentrate and write those stories. Okay, if you're a slow writer like me, maybe just make a story in your head that you could explain at any given uh, instance if I ask you to. I know you're still writing and working hard. Um, continue to think if you'd like, but let's start on this first one at least. It's be really similar to the one we've already talked about, right? Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe you got maybe you got a little more creative with it. I don't know, but it wasn't that correct with it. Uh, I'm gonna go with Kyle. A man gets four dollars per hour times X and an extra two dollars for showing up at his job. Uh, so we got four. What's the rate? X. Hours. Or four dollars an hour. Four dollars an hour is the rate. The rate of change is four dollars per hour. Every time an hour goes by, what happens? He gets four dollars. He gets four dollars. So this is this exchange rate, right? Almost a rate of change. C. Okay. X my, X hours go by, and well, however, whatever X is, four times that number is added on to his total. Uh, which started at 
what is the total start with? Two dollars. Before you even work a single second, you have two dollars. Okay. Now, and what what is X represent? X represents the hours. amount. Hours. Amount of hours. Okay. Hours times dollars per hour. Hour divides hour, and we have one, right? So there is no more hour units. Just what what units are left over after that? Dollars. Dollars are left. Okay, I'm going to ask for this one now. Please. Uh, um, okay, so negative four is the mileage he's already ran. Negative four is the mile. So if somebody has already run four miles, Tell me the story. What's okay, the story? so a man Joe, Joe ran four miles already. He already ran four miles, okay? I, okay, wait, yeah. I see he ran six X miles and he already ran four miles. He has to run six X miles. Yeah. So I think we need to dive a little deeper again, a little more detail about what this six X is. I mean, you're not wrong. You, if this is miles, then this better be miles, right? Six X miles. But we need to get we need to parse that a little yeah. bit more and say this is the six, this is what the X is. Um, wait, can I read what Square is still working on? Um, Let's, he could uh, Okay, so Grace is gonna tell me how he can fix this. Minus four. Yeah, that's pretty good. Six miles per second. Whoa. 
let me suggest this, just because, just in the interest of time, and uh, let's just get right down to it. Let's say this is going to be like, uh, it's distance, right? So let's make it um, miles per hour. Okay, that's a pretty, that's like a, so like a jogging speed. So we could jog at six miles per hour. <laughs> totally. Yeah? yeah. It'd be a fast walk, but it wouldn't be an unbelievable jogging speed, right? Right. Okay, so for X hours, if we run for six miles an hour, run six miles an hour for X hours. Now let's make sense of this minus four, okay? In the end, we're gonna be measuring a distance, right? To measure a distance, we have to have some kind of a, a reference to something, right? A place, a place that is like you haven't gone anywhere, right? Like a zero distance. Do you see what I'm saying? Out of house. Good a house, right? A house is a good reference uh, reference point. So this guy's jogging at six miles per hour, and let's say that he's right here and he's going to jog that way. That way is what kind of uh, direction? East. North. It's actually north. So you could say he took a shortcut and um, skipped four miles. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's that being comes I see what you're saying. But it becomes kind of problematic when because what we're measuring is how far he went that way. If he takes a shortcut, he's not going that way anymore. Right? So it really messes up the rate. The rate that he's going this way just like straight north, let's say, is six miles per hour, okay? And if he peers off this way, he's no longer only going north, right? If he runs six miles an hour that way, if, my, if I'm measuring how far he goes that way, now we got all this trigonometry involved, like how far, how fast is he actually running to the north some? He's running to the north some, he's also running to the east some, and it's all. You could say he got picked up by a car and then have to run the last four. That would be a positive, wouldn't it? Like just picks him up and moves him forward. That would be awesome. He had to go back. Forward. Let's just say this. Just, just say for the sake right? of simplicity. Please arrest me. I'm trying to do something here and you guys are derailing it out of time. Just listen up, please. Okay? I would be glad if we had an infinite amount of time to just listen to everything and talk about everything, but you know what? When I try to do that, sometimes it just confuses other people. So let's just get down to it, all right? This minus four could be that if his house is his starting place, let's imagine that the heater over there is, I forget his name, but it's somebody's house, this guy's house, okay? Kevin. Jim, Kevin, it's Kevin's house, okay? Now, what we're gonna be measuring is how far he's run, run north of his house. If his house is right there and that direction is north, where is he right now? If I'm Kevin. Is he there? No, no he's not right I'm Kevin. That's my house. Where am I? I'm trying to go that way. You're 10 miles away from your house. I'm away from my house. I, I need to go forward just to get to zero, just to get to my house, right? And start measuring a positive distance. That's but not 10 miles, four miles. Yeah, we're starting at four miles south because we're measuring positive to be north. We can switch around, we can make positive south and negative north, but whatever. We've decided north is positive, and I am not north of my house. Or if I am north of my house, I'm a negative distance north of my house, right? So I've started four miles back, so I've got to go six miles an hour running these four miles. Before I get to my house, now I am at zero miles. That's just my reference that I'm using, arbitrarily using my house as a reference, and moving forward. Right? Now, after a certain amount of time, now I'm at zero miles, and I can go. I can go forward. Okay? That's one way we could explain the minus four. Did you have any, another suggestion? Oh. Okay. If we start doing the thing where you take a shortcut, which is often a, a suggestion I get, uh, it starts to become true troublesome because then he's kind of changing his rate. He's turning around, he's going to different places, and it's best to measure things in straight lines to start with. You're starting to get into calculus and stuff. Aiden? Can I do the white one? We will in a minute. Did you want to do the white one as well? No? Okay, so just real quick, we have again a, what is this kind of a thing? 
A rate, right? A lot of times, this is a rate, okay? This is a rate. And we'll just kind of keep that mindset. Not that we couldn't write an equation where it's not that way, but you're going to see why we want it to be a rate as we move on. So if somebody's got the, you got the last one, Aiden? Yeah. Okay. Joe loses five pounds a week. One week he goes on a vacation and gains seven pounds. How much pounds does Joe lose at the end of the month? Okay. What can we say after the end? Because uh, a month is like 30 days. Can we the just say X time. days or X weeks? At the end of time. Why? Or is it day or weeks? So X That's weeks go by. We're not supporting each other. Are we? Distracting each other. All right, and this is a uh, just like a one time, I gained some weight, right? Getting seven pounds on a vacation. That makes sense, right? You kind of start out, what's that? Try all the food. You try all the food, you gain the seven pounds. Look, now, now you're back to losing five pounds per week, right? Now that makes sense. I mean, I see what you're saying there. It becomes a little bit difficult. That's kind of like the shortcut thing where, oh, you just kind of veers off in the middle of this thing. Yeah. What we want to think of is this is more of like a starting point. You start out at a plus seven, right? You lose seven pounds. I'd say he'd <laughs> seven pounds, but then he'd weigh a negative amount of pounds. Right, real fast. He would weigh a negative amount real fast. So seven hundred. In seven pounds, he weighs seven hundred. After he oh. weighed 300. And then he weighs 300 and, and then he, he has a goal weight of like 160 pounds. And then he got seven. But before he, he even started his diet, uh, he gained 700 pounds. Or seven pounds. He gained seven pounds. Okay. So here he is. Hey, you got a few minutes here. Hold on. We would have more. If I didn't have to keep scolding you, we make me scold you. Uh, so he starts out at seven pounds, like more than he wants to weigh, mm -hmm. right? Ah, shoot. So he starts from there, like I'm seven pounds over what I want to start at, mm -hmm. right? So he's like 307 pounds. Life's too short to lose. And then we can start with the diet of losing, right? That's how we lose, right? So that's good. You and you dealt with the negative there, right? There's that negative rate. Stop putting things away. Stop there's a negative rate. What other kind of neg rates could be negative? Uh, your annual. Your annual what? Income. <laughs> yeah. Because if you have like a mutual fund, money. and then because you can also lose money. In the so if you invest your money and your investment is not doing well, you can lose money at a steady rate. That's the thing. Like I can drop five dollars, mm -hmm. but that's not the same as a negative rate. I'm not dropping. I'm not dropping five dollars every minute. Right. Right, Danielle? <laughs> well, you can borrow some potatoes from a friend and have a negative amount of potatoes, so you owe your friends some potatoes. Right. That, that would make sense if it was like, I borrow from them every week. Like, it's got to be a rate. Like, it happens every hour, every week, every month, whatever. Car insurance. Miles. You can always drop it off for car insurance. Like you're losing money because you're paying for their car insurance? Yeah. yeah. So a bill is a good example of a negative rate. Or a bill. A bill in general, insurance, whatever it might be. Oh, I pay $30 a month. And that takes money away. It's going down. Yeah. Or like every week you have to go to the store and you, like, you have a budget of like, not budget, but you always spend like this amount of money because you always buy the same stuff. Mm -hmm. So like X amount of weeks and then, and then you spend like $30 so you spend $30 a week making groceries or whatever, whoever yeah. you are. Good, those are good examples of negative rates. In the last minute here, I want to, well, just can't avoid it anymore. Oh my that, that's what that one was for. What we, okay. Uh, what I want you to do, I want to take all three of these equations and I want you to graph all of them. Oh, yeah. graph. You have three graphs, three separate graphs, not all three graphs on one set of axes, because that is confusing. Graph three different, three different axes, okay? And some things you're going to have to decide or figure out is how many points you need in order to get an idea of what the graph looks like, okay? Uh, 
Whether you need to graph this, a little hint about graphing. Graphing is, a graph is made of what? Points. A point. <laughs> infinite, 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 number. infinite number of points. So we need to find some of those points, right? So right. Find some of those points, x and y. Yeah, Molly? How many points do you want? That's the one I want you to figure out. At some point, you're going to graph enough points, you're like, I see where this is going. I see what this graph looks like. And you finish it, right? You draw in all the points at once by drawing, maybe it's a line, maybe it's a curve, maybe it's a circle, maybe it's a square, right? You figure out what it looks like. Kyle? So you plug in the number for x and y? Right. If you, you can just, there's no restrictions. You can plug a number in for x, find a y, once you have an x and a y, that's a point. Ethan? So is this homework? This is homework. Graph all three. Goodbye. Have a good day. Oh, wow. <laughs>